Complex systems are fundamentally open systems. That is to say that they have such a high level of connection and exchange with their environment that we can no longer define them and manage them in terms of well-defined boundaries, where things are either part of the organization or not. This is, of course, how we traditionally think of organizations as being fixed, relatively static and well-bounded. Like a football team, we can say exactly who is part of the organization and who is not, and everyone typically has a well-defined role within that organization. Like a government that describes positions to each of its members in different departments. Now think of a metropolitan area. A metro area is a form of complex organization. They are open systems. People, goods, and services continuously flow in and out. What makes this an organization at all is not the boundary condition, but instead the dense network of interactions and interdependencies. Everyone is interconnected and interdependent in affecting the overall state of the system. Complex organizations then are more like dynamic networks. People join and leave as they wish. Think about Facebook's social network or people sharing files on the internet. It happens in a swarm-like fashion, with people coupling and decoupling from the organization in a dynamic fashion. In these open organizations, we do not have control over the components in the system. Like international political organizations, they don't get to tell the countries what to do. The capacity to act and make decisions resides on the local level. But members of this kind of organization have come together because they perceive their joint interdependence in affecting some outcome that none can achieve in isolation. An example might be countries coming together to try and solve climate change. Thus, the emphasis is on attracting the members into the organization and creating the conditions that will result in their coordination. These organizations may have a centralized component to them that helps to facilitate the organization. If we think about an organization like the OECD or the Linux Foundation, both have a centralized component that works as a facilitator that coordinates between the members. But the vast majority of the members are not part of this centralized component. They are autonomous and only partly associated with the overall organization. It's only really in the past decade or two that we've seen the true rise and coherent formalization of this open model to organizations, and we might call it a platform organization. The term platform has become very popular over the past decade or so. Every second business coming out of Silicon Valley is now calling themselves a platform. This is not surprising because the platform model has proved highly successful. Many of the superstar businesses that have shot to the top of market capitalization, like Google, Amazon, and Apple, are essentially platform organizations. So let's talk about what we mean by this term, platform organization. A platform is something that supports something else. A platform organization is then an organization that supports the interaction or exchange between two or more other parties. So here we can already see the difference between the closed form of organization that essentially sits above the members organizing them, and this open platform organization on which the members are supported. A classical example of this platform model would be Uber, the car sharing company. That operates as the supporting platform for connecting people with cars to people who need mobility. In economics, this is called a two-sided market, where the central role of the platform is in connecting different parties together and facilitating the exchange. Multi-sided platforms exist because there is a need for intermediation in order to match both parties of the platform in an efficient way to achieve coordination. Indeed, this intermediary will minimize the overall cost. For instance, by avoiding duplication or by minimizing transaction costs, this intermediary will make possible exchanges that could not occur without them, and in so doing, create value for both sides. Platforms, by playing an intermediary role, produce certain value for both parties that are interconnected through it, and therefore these sides may both be seen as customers of the platform. And this is unlike the traditional dichotomy between seller and buyer, or producer and consumer. These open platforms typically do not employ or have much control over the users of the system. They simply provide the enabling context for the exchange to take place. 
The platform typically provides the tools and protocols through which members interact. There are typically low barriers to entry or no barriers at all. It is an open organization people can join or leave when they want. In their basic form, open platform organizations have been around for a long time. More traditional examples would include credit card providers like Visa that facilitate the interaction between cardholders and merchants. Another example would be job recruitment agencies or accommodation agencies. The current rise of these platform organizations is largely due to the reduction in interaction costs that makes it vastly easier to set them up and gain participants and this is due to the arrival of the ultimate platform organization of our age, the Internet. Thus, many of these new systems of organization are based on the Internet, but that's not to say that they stay on the Internet. The first in this wave of new platform organizations was fully Internet-based, like Napster, Social Networks or Wikipedia. But increasingly, we see open IT-enabled platforms that organize significant amounts of physical assets such as Airbnb being the largest accommodation service in the world, or Uber being the largest taxi service. And increasingly, these open platform organizations are affecting all industries, such as new platforms built on smart grid technology, materials exchange platforms or food platforms. This open platform model has a number of advantages over closed forms of organization. Firstly, they are highly scalable. Rather than being unwieldy with greater numbers of participants, they become only more capable and valuable. With closed forms of organization, the larger you scale them, the more levels of bureaucracy you need to maintain them, and the further removed the centralized authority becomes from the actual operations of the organization. Large, centralized organizations of this kind can become very cumbersome. In contrary, platforms are optimized for scale. Because they do not deliver the end product or service themselves, they can maintain a very limited amount of assets even when they scale. For example, some online platforms have reached millions of users with only a handful of employees on a small budget. These platforms have the capacity to scale to a truly global level, with Facebook's over 1.5 billion users being a good example. Platform organizations are typically built on the long tail. They leverage the reduction in transaction costs that information technology has enabled to tap into the vast amount of underutilized resources of the end user that were previously not accessible within the centralized model because of high coordination costs. In such a way, networked platform organizations have the capacity to create new markets and tap into underutilized resources and capabilities. They aggregate a large number of small and often non-professional resources, providing a unified interface for the end user to access them. In such a way, they're able to bypass traditional centralized incumbents, creating whole new value streams out of underutilized resources, such as access to car use or available accommodation space or excess food. In the past, sellers have been limited to the economics of production and distribution to a push-based approach, meaning that they have to make an efficiently large batch size of their products and hoist them onto the market. This means a number of things. They needed significant upfront capital expenditure, that they had to leverage economics of scale to be able to compete, and they had to convince customers to buy en masse or else they would not be able to get the unit price low enough. Platforms avoid most of this, which makes them much more agile organizations. Often, the product being sold already exists. All that the platform is creating is the connections to enable the exchange. Thus, there is limited overhead costs, no great need for forecast planning, and products can be sold in small units that can enable a more personalized experience that is difficult to achieve with a centralized model set up for batch processing. Finally, platforms often work to enable the exchange of new value forms, such as social capital, natural capital, or cultural capital. Our traditional business organization really just sold products and tried to make money doing it. Although many of these platforms are strongly commercially orientated, because they are connecting people to people, they often have also a strong social dimension. 
They often enable more than just commercial transactions, but also build in social capabilities that add extra value to the system. The bureaucratic organization is designed to be impersonal, one size fits all, and this has many advantages, but it largely excludes or ignores the value of social capital. But these platforms have the technology and capability to easily include and enable the exchange of social capital that adds an extra dimension to them, often making them more engaging for the end user. With the rise of information technology, open IT platforms are becoming a standardized approach for managing complex organizations that are more like ecosystems than the traditional industrial age closed mechanical form of organization that we're used to. These platforms are really two-sided markets that work to facilitate the exchange of value, accessing whole new value sources by creating a more complex form of user-generated organization and we'll be talking further about these networked organizations in the coming modules.